In Galilean relativity, the position of a point x prime in a moving frame is related to its coordinate in a fixed frame by x minus vt. Lorentz found that for the new relativity, this must be multiplied by the factor gamma. That's the equation along the direction of motion. In directions perpendicular to the motion, distances are the same in both frames. And as for time, although clocks can be synchronized in any one frame, their readings in another frame may depend on where they are. The time in the moving frame is gamma times the quantity t minus vx over c squared. Together, these equations are the Lorentz transformation. They express the mathematical essence of the special theory of relativity. The Lorentz transformation slows time and contracts distances in a moving frame no matter which frame is taken to be moving. The observer in the moving frame thinks he's at rest and that the other frame is really moving. But these equations do more than that. They actually join time and space together. When an event occurred has no meaning without saying where it occurred. nineteen o four the netherlands lorentz publishes the definitive version of his electron theory it contains the essential equations of the theory of relativity but albert einstein has not yet been heard from which has caused some to say that history has given him more credit than he deserved nineteen o five bern switzerland einstein a young physics student supporting himself as a patent clerk, finds himself disturbed by seeming inconsistencies at the very core of physics. Can inertia and the laws of mechanics be made consistent with Maxwell's theory of optics and electromagnetism? Einstein decides that they must, even if that means giving up not only the ether, but the traditional meanings of time and space. He sets forth two fundamental postulates. The first is Poincaré's relativity principle. The laws of physics are the same for all inertial frames. His second postulate states that the speed of light is the same for all observers. He simply assumes the phenomenon that Lorentz has been struggling to explain. From these two postulates alone, Einstein deduces exactly the same equations Lorentz discovered earlier. But now, they have a very different meaning. The fundamental concepts of space and time have become intertwined. The essence of the idea can be understood by visualizing time as if it were another dimension. Albert, standing still in space, flows through time. So that a vertical line represents a fixed point, x equals zero, in his reference frame at different times. While a horizontal cross section represents simultaneous times in different places. On the other hand, someone in motion, Galileo, for example, traces an oblique path. So while what Albert thinks of as a fixed point makes a vertical line, Galileo's idea of nothing happening appears as a tilted line at x prime equals zero or anywhere else in his frame. But of course, if Galileo had drawn the picture, his line for standing still would be vertical and Albert's would be tilted backward. 
the same idea can be used to show the relativity of time. When Henry and Albert observed the same expanding light sphere, it reaches their detectors at definite points in time and space. These are called events. Meanwhile, the light itself traces out a cone. To Albert, events on the horizontal cross-section are simultaneous. For him, one of Henry's detectors flashes first, then both of his own flash simultaneously. And finally, Henry's other detector flashes. So he thinks these two events are simultaneous. But Henry thinks these two events are simultaneous. So not only are Henry's lines of constant position tilted, but so are his lines of simultaneous time. For Henry, simultaneous events take place everywhere on a tilted cross-section. So he thinks one of Albert's signals goes first then both of his, then Albert's other signal. Of course, if Henry were drawing the picture, he would draw his lines of constant place and constant time perpendicular to each other. Amazingly, that wouldn't change the light cone at all. This way of looking at things is called a space-time diagram. And many of the strange effects of relativity can be visualized this way. For example, Albert thinks that Henry's ruler isn't quite a meter long. While Henry, seeing Albert speed by, thinks Albert's ruler is shorter. On the space-time diagram, Albert measures lengths on his space axis, where Henry's ruler is shorter. But on Henry's axis, the situation is reversed, and Albert's ruler is shorter. And what about the mystery of the clocks? How can each think the other's clock is slow? On the space-time diagram, just follow the bouncing light beams. On Albert's time axis, Henry's ticks are farther apart than his own. But on Henry's time axis, Albert's ticks are farther apart, no matter how he looks at it. Actually, there's more than one way to look at the Lorentz transformation itself. While it was first derived by Lorentz, Einstein arrived at the same equations, but from a completely different direction. Lorentz used the equations to explain the Michelson-Morley experiment while Einstein's goal was to establish relativity as a fundamental and universal principle for all of physics.